Okay, I'm live. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. I am just doing a spontaneous little thing here today. I'm going to wait a little bit to see if anybody comes into the chat. This was not a planned deal here. <laughs> so, how is everyone? Mm. I'm just getting up and around and showering. I look like a wet rat. I'm sorry. You're not getting glam, Jamie, this morning like, like there is such a thing. But I thought I would just hop on here. Ooh, I got hair in my mouth. I thought I would hop on here and we could have a little chit chat because I hardly ever go live. And Blake took the kids today or this morning to his parents' house for breakfast. So I have the house to myself and I figured, why not just go live? Plus, I was supposed to have a video up today and I didn't get it edited in time. And YouTube doesn't like it when you don't post things consistently. So I thought I would go live instead. So here we are. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So first of all, I got a package from Fatbird Finds. And exactly where is my Palm Springs video, girl? Exactly. See, it's not edited yet. So I'm doing this instead. After this is over, I'm going to edit that video and get it up hopefully soon. But anyway, I got a Fatbird Finds package. And I thought, what did I buy from them? <laughs> because I couldn't remember buying something from them. Then I opened it up and this little note in there tipped me off that it's friend mail. And they just sent me something because they're sweethearts and they're nice. Hope you love these. We just wanted to send you a little something because we appreciate your support and friendship. Chat soon. Love, Laura and MB. So we're going to open it. I haven't opened it yet. There's a little Valentine on top. Hi, Debbie. Let's see if my chat is working here. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to open it together and see what they sent me. Here's a little Valentine for my teacher. Oh, that's so cute. I collect the teacher ones especially. I love vintage Valentines like probably most people do. But I collect the teacher ones because Blake is a teacher. Hi, Cheryl. Good morning. That is really cute. A Valentine that's sent to say, I think you're nice in every way. From John McDonald. John McDonald gave this to his teacher. Isn't that sweet? So that alone right there is super nice for them to send me a little gift. Oh, I already immediately know what this is. Oh, those stinkers. These two, I'll tell you what. If you saw their little haul the other day, then you saw these too. They gave me two of these awesome cups that I was drooling over. Are they serious right now? Laura, MB, you guys, that's so nice. I love them. Oh man, they're even nicer in person too. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you, guys. I'm going to open the other one just to open it. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, boy, this camera. Here we go. Now I'm doing that thing that everybody does. Isn't that nice? They're so sweet. Thank you, Lauren MB. Just the greatest. Oh, Geisha. No, it's like the, oh, what is it? Like Indonesian or India. 
little, I'll hold it up for people. I figured everybody had already seen these, but I guess not. It's like a little goddess of some sort. Super cute. So next, I need another sip of coffee because it is only 9.16 here. <laughs> They'd send the odd number. Yeah, see, I thought I would get just one of the, honestly, I thought I'd get one of the like dishwasher damaged or faded ones. <laughs> I didn't think they'd send me like a good pair. But they're sweethearts, so, you know. All right, so the other day, I think it was maybe like a week ago now, I went to an antique mall here in Southern California, in Orange, California, not the one in Palm Springs, you know, the video that I need to edit still and get up on my channel. But so we went to a local antique mall and one of the booths was going out of business. So everything was like 80 to 90 percent off. And actually the guy who I guess it was one of those situations where someone went out of business and like left everything <laughs> was like, I'm not dealing with it. And so the new person coming in bought all the stuff or bought the booth with the stuff in it. And he was liquidating all of this lady's old stuff to bring in his stuff. So he was selling all of her really old, 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 old stuff, super cheap. And he happened to be there when I was there. And so he was like, he saw me digging through, everything was a shambles because he was rearranging everything. And he saw me digging through like a pile and he was like, hey, I just bought all this. Load up a basket, I'll make you a good deal. And I was like, okay then, don't have to tell me twice. So I bought some goodies and there was actually like, I'm not gonna say a lot of junk, but there was a lot of junk. This, he said that the person who previously owned the space, um, yeah, double, triple bonus, big time. The person who owned the space, he said it was one of their longest vendors in this antique mall. And she had a lot of stuff that was still probably like priced from the 80s. <laughs> there was stuff that you could tell. It's like you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember hearing that a long time ago that used to sell for a lot of money and she's got a really expensive price tag on it, but now it's worth like $2. So, and he was even saying that too. He was like, I don't know, maybe she was drinking when she priced this and he points to something that was like $300 and I was like, okay, like <laughs> chill out, dude. But, um, so there was a lot of stuff that was expensive and he was just trying to like clear it out because it had been there since, you know, since I was born probably. Um, so it was exciting and it was fun to dig around in there, but we also couldn't stay very long because Blake and I were both there together and we needed to get home to the babysitter. So we were kind of on a time crunch. More coffee. I'm going to need to refill here in a minute, but we were, um, yeah, so we were on a time crunch and we didn't get to dig probably as much as I would have wanted to someone's at my house. That's convenient timing. Um, actually, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with, uh, this that I got on Facebook marketplace on the way out there. I'll show you in the bag first. So on the way there, someone was selling this on Facebook marketplace and I know it's not Christmas anymore, but I buy Christmas all year. This is a bag full of tacky wonder. Let's see if I can get it out without it cracking on me. It's dusty. I need to like soak it. But it is some tacky plastic Christmas garland. It's the good stuff. It's got the berries. And it's got the poinsettias and I love it. This is what I was, the kind of stuff I was looking for like all Christmas and I could never find it. And then after Christmas, I found some just like down the street from us. 
I think my Hello Fresh delivery is here. So anyway, I was glad to find that, and it was on the way to the antique mall anyway. Um, okay, so actually there was, before I get into this space of wonder, I know I love some tacky plastic too. I'll show you, I did buy a couple things just like full price from some different spaces at the antique mall. Um, this, see, I just said, I just said that I like the teacher Valentine's. I bought one at the antique mall How, for a wonderful teacher. And it's this cute little like blonde haired, blue eyed Indian boy, which you just, you know, you never see like native American stuff all that often. And I love it. So I bought this one. It was, I think, like $2 and something cents. I forget. Hi, Peterson. And yeah, I just like that. So I got that one. And then the other thing that was not in the sp out of going out of business space was some more Christmas stuff. Again, more tacky plastic Christmas stuff. And this is the popcorn berry garland and it's plastic this is the plastic tacky <laughs> garland and i got a whole dang bag of it like this whole bag is filled let's see if i can manage that there you go i think there's six strands of the popcorn let's see if i can show it to you kind of close up Oh gosh, everyone always does this with this StreamYard camera, but, but yeah, and those were, oh yeah, I wasn't, these were, I think $4 each. I think I got the whole bag for $24, which for me, for just keeping it, I'm fine with that price. I thought that was pretty good. Hmm. Let me read some of the chat. Wonderful garland. Yes, I love the garland. Oh, it was Nanette. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, see, Debbie, I think we like a lot of the same stuff. So next is the stuff. That was that was the only stuff that I got in the rest of the mall because I was spending most of my time digging through the going out of business space. So oh, this whole box is filled with that was heavier than i expected that was probably a bad idea it's filled with the stuff that i got that was going out of business and i'll just tell you the whole lot of stuff that i got from this guy came to 36 dollars. so it was definitely like hi penny like thrift store prices you know it wasn't even it wasn't even like he was taking her maybe 80s overpriced prices and bringing them back to today. He was just liquidating. He was just like, I got to get this stuff out of here. I'm bringing in my new shelving. I'm bringing in my own inventory. So yeah, he was just, he was desperate. <laughs> so um, gosh, I don't even know where to start. A lot of the stuff in here are... Um, like price guides, like collector books that talk about, you know, different collectibles. And those are usually so dang expensive. So I was really happy to get those just for me. But let's just start with some little knickknacky things that I got here. Here's a little gold cat. And I, again, couldn't tell you what I paid for it, but like her price on here is $46.50. Uh, a sale price, $30. <laughs> so, um, I mean, no, that's, that's not a $45 cat. It, it's just plain on the bottom. It's got just like gold leaf on it. Hi, fat bird finds. I just opened up your sweet box. Mary Beth. 
I just opened this up. Thank you so much, you stinkers. I'm showing stuff that I got at an antique mall that was liquidating a space. So here's item one, here's a gold cat. And I have these um, brass cats back here that are kind of similar, but this is like gold leaf on it, I think. But still, I don't think it's worth like 50 bucks. Um, where am I gonna put this stuff when I'm done? Let's see. And then, here's three really cute were these girly yes these were little girly caroler candles there's three of them if you can see those cuties and she had these priced at 35 dollars for three girly candles which is kind of crazy <laughs> so Yeah. Again, part of a lot. $36 for all this stuff. Oh man, no, she originally had these priced at $50. $50 for three little candles. I mean, they're not even in the greatest of shape. They're cute, and I'm glad that I got them for like a couple bucks. <laughs> but I don't know about 50 bucks. Her prices were kind of wild. Oh yeah. Oh, I kind of forgot about this one. I just thought this was pretty. I don't even really know what this is. Let's see if it says on here. Japanese lady on cloth. Okay. So yeah, that's about what I would call it too. So I don't know which way this goes and I don't know how to read Japanese, but there's a booby on there. I have to censor that for YouTube purposes. But here's her, this pretty, it's just a piece of fabric. I don't think it's, it's not like a tea towel or anything. I don't know what it would be. Maybe people would frame it or something, but it had a boob on it. So I figured I should get it because you know, boobs sell well. <laughs> and then I got a little pile here of some papers. This says 1957 party Memorial Day, eight picture pack. So here's the little cover. And you know, I love me my photos and this is what sold me on it here. Oh, oh, there we go. That's Crater Lake in Oregon. And I have been there before. Hi, empty nesting too. And so I was like, ooh, 1957 Crater Lake. Hey, guess what? It looks exactly the same as it does today. And then, so it says on the back, 1957 Oregon trip. Can't go wrong with boobs. Never. You can just never go wrong with boobs. And then uh, that's just another similar one. So then here we get into the fun ones with these people are having like a, oh, there's a glare. There we go. These people are having like a, a party, like Memorial Day party. And you're never going to see it in the screen. If I, doesn't matter how close I hold it, you're not going to be able to see. But the table is set with like cups and plates and things. And you can see what they kind of are, what they look like. And they look really cool because it's 1957. So, of course, it's right in my wheelhouse of an era that I love. So, oh boy, just trying to avoid the glare. I'm trying to get it into the camera. You're never, it's never going to focus where you can really see, but the pictures are just real cool. I love old photos too. I love, love, love them. This one, you might be able to see the picture, not like picture, but the picture on the table a little bit. Oh, it's so blurry. The picture is not actually blurry. Like I can see it clear as day. It's just my front facing camera is just not good. And that's about it. The rest are just, oh, where's this now? This, this is some sort of lookout spot, probably in Oregon too. And that, that's kind of a cool picture. Ooh. 
there's me in the reflection. And you just can't really see it. But anyway, see, she originally had that priced at $3.50, which I think that would be an okay price for this. So her original prices were kind of like just all over the place. Um, oh, yes. Oh, this picture was so cool. I loved this one. So Mrs. Bond, third lady with other golfers. Hmm. I don't know who Mrs. Bond is, but uh, Blake, my husband, is a golf coach and he plays golf. I do not. Not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be pressured into playing golf. I don't like it. I don't want to play it. But. I appreciate this photo because it's lady golfers, probably from the 50s or 60s, maybe. And they're in front of this John Hay Air Base Golf Club sign. And I just thought that was really cool. It's kind of a big photo. And there they are, just in their 50s golf clothes. Oh yeah. Okay. So who is she? This was at, hi Joelle. This was at an antique mall near me. I went there last weekend and a guy was there who was liquidating out a lady's space. She had been there since like the beginning of the antique mall being open and she was done. She was out of business. He bought all of her stuff in the space and he was getting rid of it at like 90% off or basically load up a basket and I'll give you a price is what it ended up being. And my price was $36 for all of this stuff. And so I'm talking about her prices, meaning the original lady's prices, because he even mentioned that she priced a lot of the stuff like way back and, you know, things change in value over time. And she never like updated her prices or tried to liquidate anything. There's stuff that had like such a big thick layer of dust on top of it. I'm like, oh, this has been there for 30 years easily. <laughs> it was the right place, right time. I just wish we had had more time. We didn't have a ton of time. There was a lot more books that I would have gone through, but we had to get home to the babysitter because we got kids and we can't just ditch them all day <laughs> as much as sometimes I wish we could. So this was just a card loose in a pile of, there's just all these papers and magazines and ephemera and some of it wasn't even priced. It was all just piled in there, but it had the original envelope and it was addressed to Miss Shirley Howe in Fullerton, California. And that's in Orange County, not all that far from where I live. And it was this really cute airbrushed kind of Santa Christmas card. Very like 50s looking. I thought that, that was just really sweet. And it says on the inside, to wish you a Merry Christmas and the happiest New Year ever. Love, Doug. There you go. So I thought that, that was just super cute. No price on it. He probably just didn't even charge me anything for it, honestly. <laughs> um, let's see. Mm, this was this was funny because the original price on this was fifty dollars. Fifty. And I never would have put this into my basket if he hadn't already told me, like, I'll just give you a good price on everything. So I was like, well, he's got to know this isn't probably worth $50. But this is a Mother Goose, if I can turn it right, Mother Goose with record. It's a book. And it's got the little record inside. And this is like very much a Blake kind of thing because he's into the records, but I'm into the like kids, kids stuff. 
you know, children's children's stuff. But this record is, is it still sealed? It's still sealed. So this is never, it's got some really old tape on it. It's never been opened. It's never been listened to. And it's got really cute drawings on the inside. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, what planet? $50. I, I don't know. The planet of overpriced antiques. <laughs> but I don't know if this was supposed to be a coloring book or what. It might have been. Does it say on here? Oh, yeah, listen and color. If I would just read the, the front here. Listen and color. And it's Whitman. That's the other thing. You may have heard Misty talk about Whitman. I think she's the one that likes all of the Whitman books and things. But, so it's a coloring book slash nursery rhyme record. Not worth $50, but worth some part of $36, then yes, sure. Hi, Day Trip Vintage Co. Mmm. My coffee is cold. I think I missed some of this. I'm watching Golden Girls and TV Land. Just wish Betty White happy 99th birthday. Oh my gosh. So my grandma recently passed away, which most of you probably know. And Betty White always reminded me of my grandma. They were both named Betty. And my grandma always had that same kind of little hairdo that Betty White has. And my grandma was sarcastic and had all these little sayings and things just like Betty White. Oh, and they were pretty similar in age. My grandma was 90, 95 when she passed away. So, but I'm glad Betty White is still around and kicking because she is just like a national treasure for sure. Um, okay, so this is, let's see, $35 was the original price on this. But, See if I can hold it up without it breaking. It's a puzzle for telling time. I thought that was a fun thing. It's in a bag and there's like a really old rubber band in there. It's like, I really, and it's really, the bag itself is really dusty. So I feel like this has been in this lady's booth for a really long time. Probably because she put $35 on it. But it had all of its pieces and it had the hands. And I feel like that's unusual for children's puzzles. Thank you, Southern Mermaid. Oh my gosh, what else is in here? This was a box of table tennis balls. And I just like this because it is the original packaging, obviously. I think there's a couple of balls in here. I didn't really buy it for the balls, but there you go. There's a couple, maybe two, two or three in there. But I just thought that's some fun packaging on there. Let's see, this was originally $9 on sale for $7.50. I, you know, I don't know if she ever sold anything. That antique mall is in a really like expensive and wealthy area. So usually when we go there, it is kind of like we're going to look at stuff and learn about things, you know, it's not, we don't always buy a lot there because it's, if you're aware of the area, it's in the circle of orange, which is a big, tons of antique malls. It's a big, like old town orange. And so it gets a lot of like touristy pull because it's like kind of set up like a you know, an old small town in the middle of Southern California. <laughs> so it gets a lot of, it gets a lot of traffic. So she may have sold a lot of stuff. She may have sold one very expensive thing a month or something. I don't know, but um, somehow she survived there for like, I don't know, 40 years or something. So 
I don't know. And let's see. Oh yeah, this is wrapped in paper, so I don't remember what this is. But a lot of the stuff, yeah, the prices on a lot of the stuff, I'm like, well, no wonder it's been there since, oh yeah, since the 80s. So yeah, see, this had $10 on it. And I bought this just because it was in really good shape. It's not usually the type of thing that I would buy. Um, but it's milk glass and it's got this little, huh, I wonder which way it goes. Maybe it goes like that because of the stems. Maybe. But I just thought that was pretty. And it says hand painted on the back. And if you hold it up to the light, which you're not going to be able to see, but it's got like the ring of fire in the milk glass. So, you know, it's older. Yeah, whatever. It was all bundled together. Why not? And it's in good shape too. Um, let's see. Is there anything? Oh yeah. There's a little picture. The rest I think are going to be books and magazines, but let's see. Let take that off. So this, I just thought was like a sweet little thing. I was kind of thinking Valentine's day really, but it's this little like lithograph of like a sweet little kid holding a dog. What do you guys think of that? I thought that was just really pretty. And I don't know, it's just kind of like pastel colors. I just thought it was kind of Valentine's Day. Like, you know, you love your dog on Valentine's Day, right? It's not all about romantic love. Sometimes I'd rather just have my animals anyway. But I thought that was really cute. And it said on the tag, it was like, very old. Oh, yeah. Child with small white dog. Very old. <laughs> $25. <laughs> so I grabbed it. I just thought it was really pretty. And all right, let's see. How am I going to? The rest is, let's see, how are we doing on time? I want to make sure I'm done before Alex starts. Um, this was just a little book on birds, like a little, you know, bird guidebook or, um, what do they call it? Not guidebook, but what do they call the, the books identification book, like a bird identification book. Let me just take it out of the bag. They so never opened it to see what year it was. Let's see. It's in kind of bad shape. It's not, um, oh boy. Okay. MCM XXXI 1931. And then again in 41 and then again in 54. So this one would have been 1954. Bye, Cheryl. Thanks for popping in. So that's that. But look at the, um, like the paper on the inside. I almost thought this would be a good junk journaling kind of deal. And it's got just nice pictures, but it is like, um, so it's like warped, water damaged kind of, but you know, it was just with everything else. So I figured it would be cheap and I might as well grab it. Very old equals very equals rare item. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Everything is rare. I was talking to Katie Vintage and Vinyl the other day about Pyrex, and she was, like, looking for a certain um, casserole dish. And <laughs> she was talking about this one that I have and that she likes, and she said she saw it in an antique mall, and they they said very rare on the ticket and I was at like very rare um promotional pyrex and I was like well yes it's a promotional pyrex but it's not very rare and it's not worth fifty dollars but you know everybody always likes to call everything rare thank you Peterson yes please hit the thumbs up thank you thank you so this one this is I think we're in the oh wait I'll do this one first this was a pyrex speaking of pyrex pyrex uh cookbook and again this is just like destroyed on the outside 
super destroyed. But Pyrex, look at the back. Oh God. But the inside is good, you guys. It's real good, photo wise. Oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Frederico. That's so nice of you. Look at, but I mean, come on, these pictures. And yeah, there's recipes in here too, but you know, you know how we are about these old recipes. So some of them look okay. I'll say some of them. And oh yeah, there was a couple of just like loose newspaper recipes in here too. Oh, look at this. So these are like, like the coffee percolators. You know what I'm talking about? The pi the glass Pyrex percolators. Apparently you could do other things than coffee. Hi, hot mess. Um, there's like asparagus in one of these. What is happening here? You could make asparagus in your percolator. Corn? I don't know. There's just some ugh, the old recipes, but I like seeing the pictures of the old Pyrex. Um, <laughs> I don't know what she's pouring on top. I don't know what that is. I see olives. Oh God. Salmon rice casserole. Blech. Um, Ooh, this is a good picture. So like, this is what you would theoretically use those like snack sets or what do they call it? Hostess sets. There's a picture of the hostess set in action. So I think that's just fun. But again, the book itself is just really in bad shape. Oh, what was the year on this one? I feel like it was 50s. Yeah, 1953. So a lot of the, um, I don't think, like the Butterprint or Pink Gooseberry was out yet. I feel like that was 1954. And it's not in this book. But here's like the Primary Fridges. And I just like to see how they used them. So this was like, they set up a little toast station, probably for some sort of a little party at home with butter and jam and bread. <laughs> congealed, oh God. Yeah, congealed is one of the worst words I think is out there. Here's a, Veal Viennese cutlets. Nothing like raw meat to wake me up in the morning. Ugh. Ooh, Horizon Blue. That's one of my favorites too. And I read that they released that pattern um, as like a tribute to the moon landing. I forget where I, I saw that kind of recently and I was like, what? But then it was 1969, the Horizon Blue Pyrex pattern. So that was right at that same time. Oh, I'm not even saying that, Peterson. I'm not saying it. I feel like I'll get demonetized if I even say that word on, on, you, on YouTube. Um, okay, so now we're into my reference books. Oh my goodness. And I got quite a few of them. Let's see if there's anything else in here first. Oh yeah, I got two magazines. I'll show you those first. This is Family Circle, July, 1950. And the name of one of the articles on here is What About Greta Garbo? But look at the cover. I mean, I thought just the cover, that was a really, that was worth picking up that one because of the Western, look at her hat. 
I thought that was cool. And then it's got a Coke ad on the back. And you kind of just can't say no to a Coke ad. And this magazine's in pretty good shape. I mean, all of the all of the 50s magazines aren't going to be perfect, but at least it's not falling apart. Look at this ad. Love that red heart. Look at the dog. Of course, I can't see what's happening here, but it's like a dog food. <laughs> I can almost see that being Valentine's Day decoration right there because of the hearts. The only three flavored dog food U.S. inspected. Oh, God. 50s. 50s dog food. That could not have been. But, yeah, like all of these, the ads inside are just amazing. Let's see if I can find another one that's real good. Oh, this one's cute. High C. Vitamin enriched orange aid. Oh, children love its fresh orange tang. You will too. I don't think tang, tang wasn't around yet, was it? Hi, C. I'm going to do this in a way where you can see it. There we go. Isn't that cute? There's the people. I don't know, that was a cute one. A red heart yarn, is it? I don't know red heart yarn. I guess they, the dog food company stole it from them or they stole it from the dog food company. Oh, this one's cute. This is not Jello, it's Royal Gelatin. Oh, I got a couple more minutes. Oh my gosh. Camera work here is not the greatest. Okay, do it like this way. You can see those kids on there. Gelatin. I just thought those the kid graphics are cute on that one. All right. Then the other magazine I got, if I can find a spot to throw that. I had to get this one just because, let's see, it's 1969, and I don't know, anything with a disembodied floating head on the front cover I had to get, and it's Peter Max, who was that um, famous, like, pop art designer of the time. He did all of those wild prints and stuff, like you can see behind him there. But look at this cover. It's just like his floating head on the cover. And I was like, yeah, I'm putting that in the cart. That's pretty cool. And then there's a great, very 1969 cigarette ad on the back, which just looks like, um, like her makeup is 1969. I think my mom graduated high school in uh, 1970 and you know, her, high school photo it's like those are the same eyes that she had it was that same like white pink lipstick yes psychedelic exactly he did all of those psychedelic prints and fabrics he did not he did not do um beetles yellow submarine although he gets credited for it often because people um confuse his work with the yellow submarine stuff. That was somebody else that I can't remember who it was. Um, but it's very similar to his style. Let's see if there's any cool ads in here. Whoa, here's a big fold out ad for a Zenith Chroma Color TV. Let's see if I can even look at how big that is. The Life magazine is already so big that when you have a fold-out ad, it's like gigantic. I was three in 1969. I was negative numbers in <laughs> 1969. But 
Oh yeah, here's a Peter Max picture. This is kind of what I was looking for. Here's some of his his stuff. It's very trippy. Very 60s. Yeah. There he is. Very late 60s, 70s. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. And the rest are price guides, which I'll just show real quick because they're not all that interesting, but they're interesting to me to have. Um, I like getting these not for the values that's in them. The value, the actual prices are outdated. I go on eBay to find prices, but this one, especially depression glass, it shows you all the patterns and the names of the patterns and the makers of the patterns. And that's all super good information, especially for me with stuff that like, I just don't know a whole heck of a lot about it and I'm learning there's just a lot of good info in these. And these are usually very, very, very expensive. Um, and I believe he gave me like $2 a book. It was one of the first things he, he tallied up and I think he was going like, okay, two, four, six. So I'm like $2 a book for price guides. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. Um, so that is one of the things I would have spent more time. If we had more time there, I would have spent more time digging through all of these books and probably would have gotten a lot more, but this one is really cool. I've never seen this one before. Valentine's with values. And it is just loaded with vintage Valentine's. And I thought even this sitting out for Valentine's day is cute, but just, I mean, this has a lot of like the Victorian like die cut ones. You can see all of those in there. And I didn't know that they even had like price guides or identification guides for this kind of a thing. So that was a cool one. That's fun to just flip through just to see what kind of Valentines are out there. And then I got these two I'll hold them both up at the same time because I saw that Alex just went on salt and peppers, salt and pepper books, ID guides. This one is kind of just like loaded. It's got lots of good stuff in this one. You can see all those pictures on the sides there. There's a lot of stuff on this in that one. And this one was like more of, looked more like somebody's you know, home collection or like a, a, uh, what do they call it? Kind of like what George did with the treasure craft book. Only this has maybe a little less information in it, but it was like a collector put together a, a ID, ID value guide. But look, some of these are really still super fun. Look at the ones with the faces on it. I love those. And the last two, I got this one, Stangle, because this is a pottery company that I don't recognize immediately when I'm out in the world looking for stuff, but it's a name that I know. And this is like hefty hardback book, just loaded loaded with with pictures and a lot of info so if you can see all the writing and stuff in there so i thought that was a really really good one and then this one was my favorite one because it's jadeite and like the green depression glass like the canisters and stuff and i I like finding jadeite. My aunt collects jadeite. I mean, like, oh my God, look at all this. All the juicers and reamers. 
there's just this is has just like a lot of fun stuff in here that I personally like. Like look at all of the jadeite bowls. Look at all that. Yeah, I love finding these books too. I love it when they're cheap. Because these go for like so much money. What did she have? Yeah, so she had $25 on this originally. Which is, you know, probably about right. Um, yeah, here's like a bunch of green glass in here. It's just got a lot of... And this, <clears throat> this one has a lot of info. Makers... Oh, I love these canisters. I would love to find these. These are like uranium, I think. But yeah, it's got all of the, the brand and the size and the dimensions and like every version that they made. And it does have the prices, which again would be outdated, but, but you can still look at the prices in these and be like, oh, look, that thing is worth way more than all these other things. So it at least gives you kind of an idea of what would be more valuable than others. So let's see, I think she's on already. Yeah, we're past 10. I wanted to get off by 10. Let's see if I miss any comments here real quick. Nice prices, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's a great book. Thanks for sharing coffee time with me. I know I need to refill my coffee. That's another reason why I need to get off of here. <laughs> I've only had one cup of coffee so far today. Oh, it broke. Oh, that stinks. I hate it when that happens, especially if it's something from their family. That really stinks. I'm really sorry. And I am a droppy person. I break stuff all the time. I know I've mentioned it in my videos before that I always joke like, oh, cats and kids, like all these breakables and I have cats and kids. And I'm like, no, it's me. I'm the one that breaks stuff all the time. The cats have broken a couple things. I don't think the kids have ever broken anything. It's, it's me. I'm the one. So thank you for joining me for this spontaneous little live event. Um, I'm going to get off of here now and go watch Alex's sale. Chapter two, Vintage Co. If for some reason you're living under a rock and don't know who she is, um, I'll see you over there in her chat. So thanks for joining me. Bye, everybody. Now let's see if I can figure out how to end this thing.